Uh, good afternoon. So I'm here with uh, the Nate Crony. This is what I bought from the uh, British Shooting Show about, well, nearly a month ago now. And um, yeah, really nice bloke. Yeah, Nate, or Nathan. His name's uh, Nathan Besh. That's his, uh, that's his business card there. So he's a really, really amicable bloke. It comes with like a, a sticker as well. So that's what comes in the box. This is the box itself. Uh, on the back it's got QR code so you can direct you to the website. Um, it comes with a, a, a USB-C to USB-C with an actual uh, USB adapter with it as well, which is quite nice. Um, it's really well, nice cable, but I found it a little long. So I've got a shorter cable here that I'm going to use. Uh, it comes with a little screwdriver, a, a hex head, and that's for fitting the adapter. This is a half inch unit ad adapter. It comes with two of these, and you basically you push it in, and there's a small hole in it. It's because all these are 3D printed, and then you put that screw in, and that holds that in place solidly. So it comes with two of these. If you do break one, you've got a spare as well. So that's the spare. Okay. It also comes with um, a little 3D printed pellet, and what that's for is actually checking it's actually working okay. So what you do, you stand on its end and drop the pellet through there, nice and central, so it doesn't hit anything, and it checks the sensors are working okay, and it checks they're consistent, and they are consistent, okay? Um, so all this is like 3D printing. Now, there's two versions of this. There's the ballistic uh, chronograph, and there's the steady shot. This is the more expensive one, which I got from uh, the shooting show. So what you've got, the ballistic's very basic, this one here. If you scroll up, there's basically a steady shot, and that's got motion sensors built into it, so it senses the movement of the shooter in all three, uh, up, down, left, right, and backwards and forwards, um, before the shot is taken, before the pellet leaves the, goes through the chronograph. So, yeah, so you can use it as a training aid, and I have tried it, and it just work quite well. So that's uh, 3D printed. This was, a, I think this was a special colour we did for the shooting show, which is like a... A wood, wood effect finish, so I had that. I could have had a yellow one or the black or that lot. So, but yeah, when you power it up, you go for, you go through a load of test lights. Uh, I will show it because this doesn't come with a power supply. Okay, so there's no power supply uh, internally. So you, what you've got, you've got your connector that side there, your yeah, USB connector, and then you connect that to anything. Now, what I've decided to do because I weighed this, and I'll tell you what the weight is on its own. It's uh, 82 grams, and I fitted this tubular five volt power supply, yeah. And basically I just taped it to the side. I had the actual connector at the end like that. And then I just run the lead from there over the top and into the top. So you can plug it and unplug it. And I'll show you how it works in a minute. So even with that fitted, it weighs 168 grams. So it's not particularly heavy even with one of these fitted. And these will last about, I think I measured eight, seven to eight hours use, okay. So how does it work? Right, so what it does, it, it opens in a web, a web page. So what you do, you connect this to a Wi-Fi. Now, if you've got an iPad that has no uh, internet connection, it's not got a, um, a, a SIM card in it, like on mine, uh, you can use it for reading, but you can't uh, send the data, um, you can't email the data. But if you've got like a, a phone like this, an iPhone, or even the, very, the first ever iPhone SE, which I've got here, and I'm, I'm not sure how old this is, it must be 10, 15 years old, that works perfectly. You see the data there, and this is actually linked to this at the moment when, when I power it up. Yeah. So what you'll get, I'll show you. So to power it up, right? So you plug in your USB lead there, plug it in there, okay. Now if you watch the front when I plug the power supply in, it'll go through a cycle. So I think it's uh, three whites. Uh, I think it's a blue, two greens, and then a white. They get a steady white. That's what you get. So here we go. Let's just plug it in. There you go. Two, three, yeah, blue, two greens, and steady. That's it. So it's all powered up now. So whatever you shoot through here will record it. Now, if you go to the actual data we have, for instance, this phone here is actually connected to it. So if I go to the app, and you can see the app there, okay? So if I tap the app, uh, actually, I will just check. I have actually connected it. Yeah, what you'll see is this, uh, depending on what, whether it's a steady shot or a standard one, if it's a steady shot like that, which is what mine is, yeah, 60042, you tap that, and that Wi-Fi connects the chronograph with the phone, okay? But don't forget, I'm still connected to the internet via the SIM card, okay? So I can, I can email data. So you can save the data and then email the data to an email address, and then you can access it 
into an actual spreadsheet, and it does work. I've tried it. So yeah, now I'm connected to that. I can actually go to the app. So if I go to the app, and I'll tap the app like so, and that's the first page you get. And that's the shop page. Now I've got some data in here. Now it seems to store this data. So if, for instance, this was off my uh, FX Dreamline 18 shots, and I took these shots uh, a couple of days ago when I was feeling a bit better because I've got a bug at the moment. <laughs> my daughter's passing it around. Very nice of her. So <coughs> if I just bring it in there, you'll be able to see the information that's been. So it's 18 shots from the Dreamline. Yeah, and uh, that's the information there. You can scroll up and down. And if I scroll up, you'll see there's four saved areas there. Yeah, okay? So you can take your shots. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how many shots this will store per save. I've never tried it, but I, I presume it's around about 100. But yeah, if you take your shots, yeah, and then you can save them into any of these four, and it stores them in there as well. So it stores it in the software. So the chronograph is linked to the web page and displays the data okay now if you come down there's a, a menu thing at the top if I tap the menu and tap graph which is below now that is the graph of the 18 shots I do if I turn it sideways you'll be able to see it if I scroll it up uh, there you go so that's the 18 shots I took that's showing so if I clear that data from the main line that graph will disappear and it stores that now if you go further down if I tap that You'll see it says steady shot and the steady shot 3D. So if I can uh, select that, that, that opens a, a web page. And as you take a shot, it senses any movement of the rifle up, down, left, right, and back, um, forwards, backwards before the pellet exits the chronograph. Okay, so it's a training aid to sort of train you how to keep still, yeah, how to improve your shooting. So there's uh, a steady shot and there's also a steady shot 3D. Um, there's no data there, but what you do get, you can go further down, if I come out of this, uh, the menu, if I tap the menu there at the cut corner, and if I come out of that and I say tap the shooting data, so all that data there, if I turn it sideways, just scroll up a bit to show you it, oops, yeah, there we go. Now all that data there is data from all four of the saved bars, okay, so there's lots of data there. And what you can do, you can download that, email it to you know, your email address, and then you can paste it into a, um, a, web, um, a, a spreadsheet, and it will give you an actual nice spreadsheet picture. So tell you what it's doing. Okay? And what I'm working on now is there's also data on the, the steady shot 3D as well, which gives you data for all three axes, X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to try and work out a way if I can put that into an actual graph, which will give you an indication of what the rifle's doing before you take the shot. So it's, it's got certain things that other chronographs haven't got. Um, when it comes to the actual the shot itself, the, the, the shot data here, yeah, at the top, um, you've got a way of removing the last shot, but you can't actually remove one of the shots from anywhere else, which is a shame, really, because you can do that with the FX radar. You can actually say, oh, that's a, that was a duff pellet, and I can, you can swipe it out, can't you, and delete it. And that would be a great thing if you could do that with this. But you can actually remove the final shot. So if you take a shot and you know it's really low, or there's something right, right, you can actually delete it there and then, and it'll just carry on recording it. Okay? So, yeah, it seems to work very well. It seems reliable. Uh, Wi-Fi set the setup. Yeah, you've got your setup page here. Um, if I scroll up, uh, at the moment I've got this set up for... Uh, oh, I've just lost my page now, I think. Something like these touch screens, it can be a bit sensitive. Right, so this is data... For the FX, my FX Dreamline 0.22 cal, it tells you what rifle it is, it tells you the pellet weight, both in uh, grains and in grams, okay? And there's other data as well, like I think you can tell it to talk to you. Now, it, it won't talk to you if you just take a shot and add a shot to another um, shot count that we've got now. But if you clear all those shots, it will actually talk to you, and that's, uh, uh, that's denoted by the actual volume of you, whatever you're using, okay? And that works very well as well. Okay, it doesn't tell you as precisely as the FX radar, you know, it'll say, for instance, if it's, if it's 10.89, it'll say 11, and if it's uh, 10.45, it'll say 10. But the FX radar, the way it tells you in data, is, is more precise. But when I actually can, uh, I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, <coughs> when I compare the two data together, the FX radar and the, and the Nat Corona together, I should be going through the data shortly and I should give you an update and see if they actually do match each other, yeah, within, say, uh, one and a half to two FPS, okay? 
So yeah, there's lots of uh, things you can do. You can adjust the speed there. I presume that will adjust the actual, <coughs> excuse me, the actual uh, sensor. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, there's presets for pellet size. Uh, auto save is on, so automate, automate saves. It'll also do airsoft as well. But what it won't sense, and I did try this, was CO2. It'll only do air, pneumatics, and uh, pure air. I did try my rat catcher through it, and it didn't it didn't read it properly. It was all over the place. Uh, I don't know why, because I mean I do I have got the other chronographs that it reads okay. I mean I've got the the Chinese one I got from uh, <coughs> I can't remember where I got it actually from uh, eBay, and that worked fine. But I think what it could do with probably an adapter onto here, a UNF to UNF, with like vents in. So when the CO2 goes in, it can be deflected out. So you something like this, only with uh, with slots in it, and inside that slots have like uh, like a an angle that comes out. In, so the CO2 would hit it and it would get deflected outwards. Yeah, that way the sensor wouldn't pick up the CO2. But that's something I might actually send you. So yeah, so that's how it works. Uh, I'll show you some of the data that you get from actually the uh, this is what I did yesterday. So this is obviously the the shot data, yeah, you can actually save this, yeah. So you all take, I took a photograph of this on, on the plate. Now this is the steady shot 3D data, so you see the squiggly lines, that's me moving around. Now I was shooting this sort of cock-handed, cock I wasn't shooting from the back, um, because I had the FX radar on it, so that movement there shows I was moving around a fair bit. Uh, so that's the worst, that's the, that's the maximum movement and that's the minimum movement. So obviously you can see the initial movement of me just setting myself up, and then all those other lines there are telling me uh, how much I'm moving before the shot. Uh, but on the live screen, you can actually tap on that, and it'll tell you different uh, uh, X, Y, and Z axes, so you'll know exactly how far you're moving at each point over that time frame. So it's, yeah, it's clever, clever technology, yeah. Um, what else has it got here? Oh, that's another graph. Yeah, this is one from the side. This is how it records it from the side before you actually move it. So you can actually tap on the actual top screen and you can zoom in on it. You can rotate it like I did so you can see down the line of it. Um, you can actually download the data and that downloads the raw data. And that's why I'm looking at trying to get that into a graph uh, that look, that look a bit more better. So yeah, uh, what do I think of it? Yeah, it seems to work very well. Um, I'll probably, um, well, what I did with this one, I attached that to the side with some, um, with some electrical tape and I put that over there and I tucked it in and it works fine um, just unplug it when you don't want to use it like that and it shuts itself down like that okay so yeah uh, lightweight seems very reliable uh, read everything off fire through it so far apart from CO2 which is a bit of a shame because a lot of some people have a CO2 uh, rifles um, it, you can get clamps for it so you can clamp it over uh, moderators if you if you uh, have a moderator but uh, the FX uh, Dreamline is fairly quiet anyhow, so uh, to be fair, just pop it over there. Yeah, uh, seems very, very good. So, yeah, so what I shall do, I shall look at the data that I've already taken, uh, go through the data, and I'll see um, if they compare, if the FX compares to that. And I think they will. I think as I was shooting it, it seemed, it sounded like they were very close, but they were within a, uh, one FPS or one and a half FPS. But... It's all relative. I think uh, a couple of FPS dis, dis, uh, differences between any chronograph isn't like, uh, you know, it's not going to uh, push you over the 12 foot pound limit, is it? Um, unless, of course, one, F, one chronograph is reading 12 foot pounds and the other one's reading 12.01. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So I hope you like that little video. Uh, take care, and I hope I'll recover from <coughs> this nasty bug I got. And uh, thanks for watching. Ah, uh, good evening. Just a small bit of additional video to go on the unboxing review. So as you can see, I've uh, taped the power supply onto the chronograph, used some black tape, and I've actually coloured the actual power supply and the uh, and the cable black with um, a permanent marker pen. So, yeah, just simply plug them in the back there, or in the front, should we say. Yeah, and you'll see how far up. Your three whites, your blue, your two greens, then you're white, and then all you do is you Wi-Fi connect this to whatever uh, device you have, and then you can actually access the the uh, web page and that uh, access to all the data. Okay, and the information of the cable is well clear of the actual exit and the sensors just inside there. And another thing as well, what I forgot to mention, it does come with a 
a nice little carry bag here not the thickest one but it will fit in with the power supply fitted so it's quite a good idea just to keep it keep the dust off it when you're storing it okay so I hope you like that little bit of additional video uh, still quite croaky yeah um, if you like these videos please subscribe they're all free and just so you'll get notifications and I will be doing some comparisons between the Nate Crony, the FX Radar and probably the uh, LMBR as well. Uh, use them in unison with each other uh, so that way I can take readings of all, all three and see how they all relate. If they relate, uh, if they correlate with all the different, all the same settings, all the same pellets and all the variations and see how close they all are. But that'll be uh, when the weather improves. So I hope you like the little video. Take care and thanks for watching.